Hello, welcome back to Fanny 40 k We're continuing on with our bite size reviews. This time we're looking at the Canoptic Tomb Stalker. Now that's not in the Necron Codex, of course, but it is available for the Necron faction. Now you will be able to purchase this model from Forgeworld.com. It's £51.50 and pence in the UK, or $80.50 and pence in the USA. So unfortunately, it does come in a resin kit, say no more there. And the rules for this model can either be found in the 40k app, or in the Imperial Armour Compendium book. So, let's get on to the actual data sheet of the model, so it's 90 points, it's an elite selection, and it's a monster with a canoptic keyword. Now some of the statistics of note, it's got toughness 7, and it's got 9 wounds, with a 3 plus armor save on top of that too. So quite a chunky model, but unfortunately there's no invulnerable save whatsoever. Now it is relatively fast though, for an elite selection anyway, it's got a 10 inch movement, and a pretty decent base size on top of that too, so it can be getting across the board quite quickly. Now ability wise, apart from the living metal and command protocols, it's also got the dimensional translocation ability. So you do have the option of deep striking in if you wanted to, turn 2, turn 3, whatever. As long as you're more than 9 inches away from enemy models. Now we just mentioned that base size being quite large. So getting it in, in the smaller games may be a bit of a challenge, but you should be able to find space for it. Now before we get into the actual weapons, I just wanted to make clear that you get the gloom prism for free. It comes at no additional cost, whereas with a Canoptic Spider, you'd have to pay 5 additional points for the Gloom Prism. That's going to mean this model can deny a Psychic Power, as if it was a Psyker. So, for the weapons, well, they're hitting on 4s because they're Canoptic. Weapon Skill 4+, plus, Ballistic Skill 4+. Plus. Let's get on to the, what it actually has. First of all, in terms of range, it's got the Gorse Slicers. 24 inch range, Rapid Fire 2, Strength 5, minus 1 AP, and 1 damage. Kind of weak output, if I'm honest with you. Going up against Armor of Contempt means it goes down to 0 AP. But because it is a monster, it can shoot into combat, and of course that would be rapid fire range as well. So it'll be having four shots as opposed to two per gore slicer. It's actually got two gore slicers there. Don't make the mistake I made when I first played with this model, it actually has two gore slicers. Now as for the melee weapon, it's got the Tomb Stalker Claws. Now these are strength 7, minus 2 AP and 2 damage, and this thing actually has 6 attacks. Unfortunately this is not a core unit, so you can't be using the Disruption Field Stratagem to gain plus one to strength, to make it strength eight, you can't do that here. However, you can be using the command protocol of Hungry Void, which will do the exact same thing. Now, one of the stratagems that is worth noting here is the Enslaved Protector stratagem. Of course, this is a canoptic unit stratagem. They can heroically intervene as if they were a character. Now, because again, I'm gonna mention the base size here, but it's pretty big. So being able to heroically intervene with that radius is pretty decent, and it's only gonna cost you a single command point. Now dynasty wise, there's a few to pick from here, the Mephrit dynasty of course, adding the extra range to those gore slicers, making them 27 inch range, also getting the extra bit of AP, that's going to possibly nullify the armour of contempt, if you're not going against armour of contempt then minus 2 AP, pretty good. The Novak dynasty of course for the plus 1 to the charge roll, very similar, you're going to get extra AP that way, or the Nihilak dynasty for objective secured, yeah, that's not too bad to be holding down an objective. The other dynasties, such as the Zerikin dynasty, that's the anti psycho dynasty if you like, especially with the Silent King involved, he's got his own deny. The Stratagem as well, that's another deny. There's lots of ways of denying psychic abilities with the Zerikin dynasty. And the last option I wanted to mention is the Sawtech dynasty. It does have rapid fire weapons after all, you can go for it if you wanted to, you're probably not going to, but I thought I'd mention it. Now in terms of unit synergy, due to the lack of invulnerable save, maybe a Chronomancer could help here, giving it a 5 plus invulnerable save and the re-rollable charge roll. But to be honest, this monster is only 90 points, and for 90 points you can get 3 Scorpic Destroyers, which have got a combined total of 9 wounds, which is exactly the same as the Tomb Stalker, but they're going to be dealing a lot more damage, there's a lot more attacks there, a lot more damage, so I'd already be choosing the Scorpic Destroyers instantly there. I mean, sticking with those Destroyers for a moment, because there's 3 complete separate models within that little mini unit there, they're going to soak up more damage. So if they say, for example, a 5 damage weapon and it goes onto one of our Scorpi Destroyers, he's only going to eat 3 and then remove the model. That 2 extra damage is going to go to waste. Whereas if it's a model that's got 9 wounds, such as a Tomb Stalker, all 5 of those are going to slap on to the Tomb Stalker. Not only that, the Scorpi Destroyers are re-rolling 1s naturally with their Destroyer Cult ability, and they're hitting on 3s anyway, whereas the Canoptic units hit on 4s. They're also suffering because of the fact that they're not a core unit, so there's a lot more restrictions in terms of the dynasty buffs, there's no mind will be done. Although a Tetramanta with the control node could boost their to hit rolls to a 3 plus as opposed to a 4 plus I guess. And the failsafe overcharger as well on top of that for the D3 additional attacks. But to be fair, 90 points to field a distraction Khan effects if you like isn't too bad really. You could send it in solo, you don't need to buff it, you don't need to give it any sort of babysitters. 
It's going to eat a lot of shots early rounds. Maybe it can even steal an objective. Especially if you're going with the Nihilak Dynasty, that could be a four-point swing, even an eight-point swing, in fact, depending on the mission. But I'd then argue that Canoptic Scarabs can do that for much less. They're also kind of comparable to the Canoptic Wraiths. There are similar points cost to three Canoptic Wraiths. They've got the same sort of speed, but they come with a natural invulnerable save, and they can also move through models and terrain. So it's not really looking good for the Tomb Stalker at this moment in time. I kind of feel like they are in between the Canoptic Wraiths and the Canoptic Spiders. They're quick enough and tough enough, but I don't think they do either of the jobs as well as either of those units. Even its Canoptic cousin, the Tomb Sentinel, is just a better pick, which we'll probably go over that in a later video anyway. But overall, this is an okay pick. It's not ultra competitive. Maybe you're bringing it to a friendly game. As for the Planet 40k rating today, I'm going to be going with a 2.5 stars.